Yo, what's good, Hunter? This is your boy Miles Jones, and I'm here with. Hey, Two Cent, yes, sir. For sure. And if y'all don't know, this is a two part video, so if you haven't watched the first part, go back to her video at Take Two Cent. Appreciate that. Yeah, get that knowledge, and then come back over here. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get right into it. So, we're talking about mistakes, do's, and don'ts when it comes to starting a clothing brand or whatnot. And we're just going to pick back up. We're going to go straight into manufacturers. So, I know you got a lot to say. <laughs> so, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you go ahead and spit game. Like. Okay, so we on like tip number five. I ain't even gonna count them. I count them. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no way you just did that! No way, bro. Oh. I'm about to keep that in the bid. No <laughs> way you just did that. Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we starting off with manufacturers, bro. All I really gotta say with manufacturers is be careful and be smart. So at the end of the day, most people who start out clothing brands or still work with clothing brands is either Pakistan or China. Personally, if you want good quality and just a little bit of wait time, you go China. If you want medium quality and fast shipping, you go Pakistan. At the end of the day, when you go Pakistan, you are the boss. In China, you are not the boss. <laughs> <laughs> They've been doing this day dang near their whole life. Like, they know exactly what's going on, so the price is the price, and you're not changing it. But at the end of the day, just be smart. I'm not gonna say too much right now. We gonna go. We really gonna like piggyback off each other because it's a lot. Manufacturers is like a whole book of yeah. like of stuff. So yeah, I'm passing that on real quick. Oh uh, yeah, but you. I don't know. Like you gotta treat it like a relationship almost. Like you gotta understand that like, at the end of the day, it all the partners. And you gotta understand that like. You have to be detailed, you have to be able to communicate, you have to make sure that y'all are on the same page, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna say like the energy has to be there, but it has to be like a mutual ground, like a respect type of thing. And I might be getting deep into it, but like if you have a manufacturer, like y'all really locked in, it's like the best thing in the world. I really feel like you unbeatable, like you can't be fucked with on some real shit. You gotta understand like there's levels to it when it comes to manufacturers, when it comes to the, the work that they do, when it comes to the time that they can produce the work, ship it out to you. You gotta be wary of certain holidays. Like if you go to China way, they got like a, a New Year's that starts in like- the They on New Year's way. right now. I don't bro, and it lasts like, what, like a month or something. And they don't work, they don't, well they don't be in the factory, I know that. But it's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of stuff they just don't do. It's just, it's really a lot, bro. Like, you got anything to- Oh, we can talk about this all day. <laughs> we can talk about this all day because at the end of the day, it's like, you get scammed by one manufacturer, you probably gonna get scammed by two more manufacturers. That's the thing. <laughs> like, it's never gonna be a real ending until you really kind of boss up your life and be like, all right, like, I am the boss. Like, new clothing brand owners, it, it could be hard for you to be like, okay, I put in this order, I did this. Because I, did, I made this same mistake. Like, my first real order, it was a sample. That's the crazy part. First of all, I went with somebody who DM me. We both went with somebody who DM'd me. Yeah. His experience was so much better than mine. Like, so <laughs> much better than mine. Nigga had me waiting like three months. But if you want a real story time on that one, go go to my channel, bro. I literally am about to post it. But, like, you have to be assertive. Like, this is your business. This is not no play play time. This is not shake that ass time. Like, yeah. <laughs> you really have to be like, okay, like, I want this by this date. And if you can't produce this by this date, I am taking X Y, X, y and Z amount off of this and it's like the thing that i have learned is to just get a contract make you up a little contract something real smooth adobe whatever and have them really sign it because these are my terms like i'm not playing and at the end of the day they want the money they need the money and if you raise them up a little bit and if you have other clothing brand owners like yeah i work i have x y and z like they gonna work with you but i'm just to test them because i'm doing that right now and it's actually working so they will fall in line fall in suit so you just have to be, you have to be real selective with your wordplay and what's going on. And just, I I can't even, I can't, like, if y'all have real specific questions, DM me or Miles, and we will do a part two to this video, because there's so much to talk about, right. but it's so many different lanes of how to get, how to not get scammed. Like, okay, one tip. If you want a bulk order, you doing a bulk order, do it in three, seven payments. Mm -hmm. And pick your time for the payments. One third when you, when you start, one third when they start uh, cutting and sewing, and then the last when he sent you the tracking number. Right. Cool. Like that's just one thing, but it's so many other things. Like <sighs> it's a lot. It's a lot of a lot to go into. It really is. I ain't gonna lie. It really is. If y'all need a manufacturer list, hit me. I got three different tiers: 50, 30, and 15. 50 is like European, and 15 Pakistan. 30 is China. So mm -hmm. just hit me. I really got both. 
too want to touch on manufacturers or what you want to go into? Um, you ever told them a story about your your manufacturer? Oh, I didn't. You want to tell it now? Or you want to tell them to tune in the next bit? Ooh, yeah, y'all tune in next bit, bro. Cause it's a yeah, it y'all got a crazy that. story. Yeah. I ain't even gonna lie. For sure. So marketing, we won't say like when you get your you start out with samples, I guess. Yeah, when you get your sample, for sure. All right, best. So like when you get your samples, I'm gonna tell you this: as a new clothing brand owner, you do not have to do a brand photo shoot. What people fail to realize is that people like to see your clothes. You told me yet the other day, is like clothes in motion or something. Yeah, they want to see it in motion, like how it look, how it fit, like mm -hmm. how it is. What we doing right now? This is a form of like marketing. What you got on in motion? Like you seeing how it fit. You seeing how his stuff fit? Like it's like, oh, okay, I like that. I actually see it drape on the body. Like you can actually see it but you don't really need to do a whole ass photo shoot and you really don't you need to start to, listen <laughs> listen ahead, we telling you this because we're literally we just did it mm -hmm. do you see that in the background that is his photo shoot yeah. we didn't need to really do that we could have been fun though and it was productive i ain't gonna it I, was though the photos it, came out great shout out show for sure if but, you ever in charlotte tap in yeah yeah um we're just saying like if you just starting out and you don't have the bread like you don't have to you don't have to you know? You we really don't have to. That was actually it was a cool thing. Like it was a cool little link up. Mm -hmm. We could have just went outside and did the regular things that we. Do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So talking about manufacturers, when it comes to paying them, you never want to pay them in full. That's the quickest way for them to get off on you. You want to split everything up into payments, whether it be a payments of two, three. If you get lucky, you can do four. But I feel like you have to build a strong relationship with somebody for them to accept four payments. Most of the time, they'll be cool at two or three, but never send him just a flat out, or him, them, she, whatever. I don't give a damn who it is. <laughs> it be your mama. Don't send her all the bread, bro. For real, no, though. Don't do it, bro. For real. You're going to be SOL. Like, for real. That, I mean, it would be easier for you, like, if let's say you do get scammed, Lord forgive me, but let's say you do get scammed, you only sent them by 150 not like 300 like or whatever your price is. So, I think it's a little, it's just better. It's just better. Nice, yeah. CYA, if you don't know what CYA is, you need to grow up. You know what CYA means? Nah, I need to grow up. Oh! <laughs> I mean, cover your ass. Oh, cover yeah. your ass. Oh, bro. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So next is, I guess the question that everybody wants to know is Pakistan or China. Mm -hmm. It's real simple. Just think about it like this. You have 90% in your house is probably made in China. Yeah. That's just what it is. They know exactly what they're doing. They care about what they're doing. They tied in, they locked in. They know exactly what's going on. So if you tell them something, and be like, yeah, I want this made, and I want, let's say, I want the stitching all the way down to the sleeves, or I want this. They're going to pay attention to detail and give you exactly what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. Pakistan, they will BS you a little bit, especially when it comes to little free game. They're going to send you your sample correct, but when you get that bulk order, it might be a little messed up. So go through every bag. I know it's real irritating, but go through every bag. If you really care about your customers, go through every bag. Pakistan is cheap, er. And some Pakistans are real good quality, but like, if you really want that A1, you go in China. You're gonna wait, you're gonna pay that money, and you're just gonna, you're gonna do what they do. The price difference sometimes isn't too bad, but sometimes it is real bad. So just figure out where your profit margins are, and that's, that's free game. If you're trying to figure out which one you wanna go to, figure out your profit margins. Ask one, how much is this for bulk? How much is this for bulk? And what can you, what can you can afford, basically? And think about it as if, if everybody know what profit margin is. If you don't, it's basically how much room it is for what you pay per item versus what you like are going to get in revenue per item. Mm -hmm. So if everything lined up, you can go with China. If it don't, it's if it's a little like I'm not gonna give too much, but if it's yeah. a little under what you want, go with Pakistan. And for samples and bolts, right? So I'm not gonna lie, your sample is probably gonna be expensive. That's just because of the name of the game. Like you gotta understand, these people. Are, or taking time out of their day to just focus on one or two items instead of already working on something else. And they gotta come up with new sets so you can, new setups for them to screen print or wherever else they gotta do, like cut and sew, like they gotta get the materials out of that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna go specifically to each, to the price, but like you shouldn't be paying more than like 500 for a sample, bro. I'm like, well, what do you think? Uh, uh, I feel like, let's say if you want a sweatsuit, mm -hmm. if you go in China, 220 most if it's good quality if you go in pakistan 180. Mm. then that might not be including shipping yeah but if it's nice quality because i've definitely been quoted from a nice china manufacturer 220 and that was actually one for the hoodie and one for the um for the pants i'll say damn you tweak it but sometimes that is what it is so it's all about what you can afford but 
just negotiate. Mm-hmm. That's my always gonna be my one to negotiate. Cause like I said, Pakistan want that money. China, you can't negotiate. I literally tried to tell her no, a hundred. She said no, <laughs> <laughs> no. So for sure. Every year, finding a manufacturer, you want to pay attention to their MOQ, which is minimum order quantity. Some people might be thirty. Some might be forty. Some people might be fifty. It all depends. You got to understand where your stage is in the whole scheme of things. Like if you're just a new brand, you want something with a low MOQ because I'm not saying you're not gonna get a lot of sales, but you wanna be able to afford your boat when it comes out so that you can actually send it out to people. Mm -hmm. Because in my instance, I did a drop, I got the money from the sales, and I was gonna send it over to my manufacturer and I was gonna break it up and basically get all the stuff made so that I can send it out to my customers and supporters or whatnot. And the money, it wasn't adding up. It was all lopsided. Like basically, for 30 sets, he wanted nineteen fifty, which is $1,950. But for like six, five or six sets, he wanted like 1000 So the money just wasn't adding up. You know what I'm saying? It just, you got to make it make sense at the end of the day. Is that, is that what you mean? Or you mm-hmm. going? Basically, going back to what he literally just said, he, he actually took the L for both of us. Because now <laughs> I know. Like, yeah. for real, it was a lot like a... It wasn't a discussion of the MLQ and the price per before the sample was ordered. So, like, that is very, very big. I'm, and I'm the, after his experience, I heard it more and more often. That shit happens to a lot of people. Like, please talk about your MLQ and your bulk price before you order that sample. Because you're going to get that sample. You're going to be like, yeah, this shit fine. Let's say you only get, like, 12 orders, but his MLQ was 30. So, now he's charging you to break, really break it down. Now, he will charge you sample price. Mm-hmm. Per every one, it's because you didn't reach that breach that MLQ. You're coming out of pocket. Period. Like it's just like, bro, just refund the money and, and then just do it over. It's just a, it's a lesson, but we should we saying this so y'all don't have to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Because definitely don't went through a couple of these lessons. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> sure. Another thing, a lot of uh, clothing brand owners kind of just mess up with and go through a lot of the trials and tribulations that we talking about is because they don't buy a manufacturer list. It's real simple. Real easy. I'm selling one. I got three tiers, 50, 30, and 15. China, Pakistan, Europe. Easy. Get what you need to do. Just invest in the knowledge because they're paying for it because we took the time and took the L's. So you don't have to. So why not just invest? You're going to spend the money anyway. Yeah. So you might as well like put that back into your business and it's going to save you heck of time. Like, just do that because... At first, I didn't buy a manufacturer list, and I went through these things. After I bought my manufacturer list, I was like, okay, cool. Everybody goes through it. Everybody does it, but it just depends on what you do with that knowledge after the fact. So, yeah, tap in with me for sure. When it comes to these manufacturers, you want to build a relationship. You got to understand that y'all are technically partners. You know what I'm saying? You got to have good communication. Uh, You got to understand each other. And you also have to be really, like, specific and have attention to detail because you can't just tell... Somebody in a whole different country that doesn't look like you, hey, I want a shirt that look like this, and then make it. Bro, they're not going to understand. You got to tell them the size. Uh, if you want, you know, DTG, whatever, screen print, puff print. If you want a pleak, if you want Chanel, patches, mm-hmm. you have to be real, you know, specific to the details. And that's even talking about tech packs and stuff like that. And if you don't know nothing about no tech packs, I'm trying to tell you, tapping with Tay. She can teach you about all this stuff, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? But so. Like he did just, he gave me a nice little alley. Bro, tap in with me if you need a tech pack p- template. Like, I do got you. Tap in with me if you need a tech pack template. A lot of the brand owners just make the mistake of, you will have a cool manufacturer, but you're not specific enough to where the fact that they know what you're talking about. Like he said, this is a whole nother country. They don't have the same, they TikTok's probably not even the same as ours when we scrolling. Like, it's completely different. So you literally have to give them step-by-step instruction like you're talking to a two-year-old. Like, this is what I want. And, of course, they're not, you know, they're not, not, damn, what's the word I want to use? Incompetent. Word. That's exactly what I want to use. <laughs> it's not like they don't know what you're saying, but you have to say it. They're not going to guess it for you, like, for sure. Um, chill on the slang, too. Like, if you say shit like type shit, no bullshit, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, let's be a little bit more <laughs> professional, because then he's not taking you serious. Like, he, th- he thinking that you're just the Americans that he see on TV. And the way that Americans are portrayed on TV, especially, y'all already know what's going on. Yeah. I don't have to say too much, so... Yeah, definitely keep it professional. Um, and know your, this is off bearing off, but know your measurements as well. Mm-hmm. If you need that, I got that as well. Like, know everything to the T to where it's like, it's a flat line. This is what I want. And if you don't deliver, then this is what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to cut you off or we're going to make it work. But I'm getting X, Y, and Z amount off on the book. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just know what you're doing. Just know what you're doing for sure. For sure.
Also, with building a relationship with them, make sure you get on the phone with them. And I'm not talking a phone call. I'm talking a FaceTime call. You can call them on Alibaba. You can call them on WhatsApp. You can call them on Instagram. I was finna say Kick. We don't got no more. Um, could you FaceTime on Kick? I don't know. I know Uvu is what we used to think. They still got Skype. You yeah. need to see that that warehouse. Like you literally need to see what's going on and what are they doing and you need to see it because that's a, just an easier way for you to get scammed if you can't see it. I know some people have like like they'll be in the states and then they have a warehouse also in Pakistan. I don't care. You got to get on the phone with me. I don't care. I have to see that warehouse of what my stuff is coming out of because I want pictures and videos. So if I I can't be mad at you that you never send me pictures and videos. If I never seen the world, so it's on you. At the end of the day, it's on you. Also, with that, just make sure they can actually deliver on the product that you want. Make sure that they have similar products that you have already seen that they've done that that you can do as well. For example, my first sample I got, I got from a dude. He has never done anything more than probably like 200 GSM. I asked him for 480, like 480. Measurements, everything cool. He sent me back an old navy tracksuit. <laughs> that is not. I'm talking like cuffed at the bottom, all type. I was like, no, this is not what I wanted. But again, it's my fault because he didn't make anything on the caliber of what I wanted, on the streetwear caliber of what I wanted, not even close to it. So what made me think that he's going to uh, magically just do what I want just because it's me and because my measurements is right? Like, no, he don't know that style. He doesn't know. So yeah. just know they know. Like, this is what we got going on. Just talking about your experience. Be personal with this one, because this is a real personal thing. All right. They can't teach work that thing. For sure. When it comes to this color brand thing or anything in life, it's just a saying that goes, it goes like, how you do one thing is how you do everything. In all facets of life, whether like you have routines, habits, whatever, cool. When it comes to like school, work, even clothing brand, like how you do one thing is literally how you do anything. Because like what you put in is what you get out. So if you're lazy when it comes to, if you like slip up, if you're lazy when it comes to marketing or, you know, just not being specific on your mock-ups when you're trying to send out like a tech pack or just anything, like it's going to be flaws that come back. Like, it's going to be something like responsive. Like it's literally what you put in is what you get out. You got to think of it as like an exchange or a system. So like if you're lazy when it comes to marketing, bruh, you're not going to get that much growth on your old pages. You're not going to be able to connect with your customers and supporters. You're not going to be able to get a lot of sales simply because of the fact that you're trying to take the short route. The first time I got a sample, what I did was I ordered a blank off of Superline Wholesale mm -hmm. and I went and screen printed it and everything was super small out of this out of that because I just wanted to take the fast route and see what I could do, which is cool, mm -hmm. like figuring it out. Then it took me to like real time. It was real expensive, but you know what I'm saying? We came together, we got the, the sample done. Hello? The seeds. So basically you got to understand that like, if you're lazy, bro, it's going to show. You can't bullshit a bullshitter, my nigga. Like, I ain't gonna say too much. I'm gonna let Tay, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. You yeah, feel me? <laughs> yeah. No, like, I definitely feel like this ties in with everything that we said. Just doing your homework, being like due diligent about what you wanna do and understanding that this is a whole process. But at the end of the day, it's really like how bad you want it. Cause for me personally, he knows I have at least like, I'm supposed to be like five drops in. Yeah. But I didn't want it as bad. I just didn't want it. I don't it doesn't matter if the process was was scaring me or not scaring me, but just making me like it it was uncomfortable because I didn't really know what the outcome was gonna be. I know I'm gonna be what I wanna be, but it's the fact that doing the one twos of it, your worth ethic literally has to be the number one thing because if you like at at the end of the day, you sleeping at, at one one. I'm up till five. Yeah. cooking like because i want to get this done on the phone with manufacturers like how bad do you really want it it's going to seep in to your clothing brand and it's like if you if you train yourself like he said to have that mindset and really just do what you need to do when it comes to you later in line when you drop in you're gonna have that same work ethic to like okay i need to post like five times this week um i got this drop i need to i need to market it i need to market it i need to market it because you're gonna get that back in income because yeah. that's what time that you put out you always gonna get it back it's like a cycle so like definitely and if you are a clothing brand owner and you kind of have gotten comfortable just be real with yourself there's nothing that you are your biggest critic fan all of that so it's nothing for you to be like bro like or like sis like bro like mm -hmm. i'm tripping i need to get back on my routine i don't care if that means you have to wake up and go work out i don't care if you got to make you a smoothie i don't care what you got to do to put a candle on i don't care what you got to do but make sure you putting in the time that's needed to be where you want to be because if you don't put that time in you're not gonna be where you want to be there is no shortcut to it yeah that's it and like when she said working hard and like see if you really want it 
whenever you start something new in life, whenever you ask God or I'm not even trying to get in like too much of that. You know what I'm saying? But we we both Christian. Hello. So if you if you tap in, bro, tap in. Tap bro, in you know for what sure. Saying? For sure. You you gonna get what I'm saying, but whenever you ask God for something, whenever you step out on faith, you're going to get tested, bro. He gonna test you to see how like if you really want it or not, bro. Even even if you're not a Christian, you are gonna understand the fact that like if you're starting a new job or if you're starting a new venture or you're going out of your comfort zone, but you're going to get tested to see for if sure. you really want it or not. So like she said, if you want it, like your work ethic gotta be there. You really gotta be a student in the game. You can't skip any corners you know what i'm saying it's not to scare anybody but it's, it's literally just the facts like whatever you put in is gonna be what you get out for sure and if it's already scaring you i was gonna say if it's already scaring you it's not for you but if it's scary you that's good that's good yeah. it's really good because you're not supposed to be comfortable like this is an uncomfortable thing when you get comfortable that's when you start falling off always be uncomfortable do what you got to do like mm -hmm. it don't matter what venture you want to do do what you have to do and also I'm talking to the people like me who think they can do five different things at one time. If you're doing five different things at one time and ain't one of them stick yet, focus on one and then do the other four. Yeah. Okay. And that, you talking to me too. I ain't going to lie. I be, yeah. Thoughts just be wrong. I'm breath. already knowing. Yeah. That's how I be. It's cool though. We have, we are creative people. Like, it's cool. Write it down. Get you one of these. Mm. Write it down. And then just focus on one thing and have that stick. Because you never know. You trying to do five things at one time. But if you, have, if you focus on one thing and it actually sticks... Mm. Some things that you did in that one thing could also go trickle down to the other thing and make everything just easier instead of just fighting it. Thanks, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I look you want to tell them to say write everything down like you said, bro. Like, but just write it. Please write it down. Yeah. Like, for real. So I'm serious. I'm so serious. Please write it down because my mind goes a mile a minute. And I be getting mad because my book needs a table of context. There's so <laughs> much stuff in here. But, like, write it down. At least it's here instead of not just up here. Because right. you got to think we get so much information on the daily TikTok, Instagram, it, you can't remember that. You can't, bro. And it's kind of like, you know, when you're in school and the teacher got something on the board and you take a picture of it, but you never go mm -hmm. back and look at it, bro. It's the same thing. It's right the it, same bro. thing. Same, bro. Write it down. Write it down, bro. It makes your mind remember it at least the fact that you saw it, mm -hmm. one, you wrote it down, two, and if you come back to it, that's cool. Like, that's cool. But at least you did those two steps to actually remembering what you wrote down. If you don't, bro, it's literally in your book. Facts. You good. You good, bro. Facts. Oh, and don't think this is like a overnight get rich quick scheme like bro you got to be dedicated like bro the energy you put out it's going to return to you but like you just in it for the money bro it's going to be real tough it's going to be you're going to oh, be me. sick you're going to be sick <laughs> you're going to be sick for real hey. for real you're going to be sitting on a lot of things that you want to get off and don't know how to get off because you didn't even put the time in to think about that mm -hmm. like nah Longevity, longevity, longevity. If you want to do this for real, think longevity. I'm talking Nike longevity. Reebok longevity. We was not wearing Reeboks five years ago. Who had a pair of Reeboks five years ago? Who had a pair of Asics five years ago? Who? Nice. And don't run. Yeah. Be for real. Like, for <laughs> Wait, my fault. My bad. My <laughs> no disrespect, but you get, you get me, though. Like, bro, we rocking them. Like, I would probably go get a pair of Asics right now and rock them. We was not buying New Balances. Like, really think about it. It's going to have to be a time to where... You're not the number one brand right now, but you have to be consistent. Like, you showing up. People at New Balance, when they was on their lowest, they still showing up every day. Sorry. Every day. Because they know one day it's going to be to a point where we back at it. So, just think about that. Like, literally think about that. Yeah. Yo, you, in this video. Y'all, we, y'all, me, y'all, damn. Yeah. <laughs> this motherfucker freestyling in the video. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro. Y'all might see us in another video in this same setting. We about to chop it up real quick and get to it, but... For sure. It's your boy Miles Jones tapping in. It's Tay Two Cent. You know what's going on? No. Redo that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All right. All right, babe, go. It's your boy Miles Jones tapping in. It's Tay Two Cent. And we out. We're gone.